When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. All right, I'd like to say a prayer. Dear God, today is Mother's Day. This is a day that we are supposed to give extra thanks to our mothers, just not thanks, but extra. Please remind us that our mothers protect us and love us, just like you do, God. Let us give thanks to you, God, for our mothers and what they have done and do for us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ian, for that beautiful prayer. Usually when Pastor Dave and Sandy are on vacation, we get a guest speaker. But as you know, we are saving money to build a church, so you guys are stuck with me this morning. <laughs> I said this morning, some of you laughed too hard at that joke. How many of you have seen the movie The Passion of the Christ? Okay, a lot of people here. Well, the week before Easter, I rewatched this movie for I'm not sure how many times now that I've seen it. But you know when you watch a movie several times, each time you watch it, you seem to pick something up that maybe you didn't notice the first few times that you watched it. And for me this past time, the scene of the crucifixion really stood out to me. And it wasn't for the obvious reason of the crucifixion, but the concern that Jesus showed for his mother. Um, there he was hanging on the cross about to breathe his last breath, and yet he wanted to make sure that his mother was taken care of. And as Ian read for us, and I'm going to read it again just for emphasis, in John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. So even while, even while dying on the cross, his concern was for his mother, and he instructed John to take care of her. And what a great example of how important it is to take care of and love our mothers. And that's because our mothers are precious gifts from God, and we should value and care for them under all circumstances. And sometimes our unnecessarily busy lives can get in the way from us fulfilling that responsibility. So today I want to share with you a few ways that we can uphold that responsibility for, for caring for and loving our mothers. Now there may be some of you like me whose mothers have passed away, so you can no longer do the things that I'm going to talk about today. And if that's true of you, you can still set an example for those around you by showing the same kind of love to other women in your family, especially your spouse. So here we go, eight ways that you can show love to your mother today and every day. Number one, tell her you love her. For the most part, ladies do not seem to struggle with this concept. However, us men, sometimes we feel like we don't have to say these words. Uh, we may look at these words as making us soft or uh, showing weakness. And we like to say, actions speak louder than words. And that's true, actions may speak louder than words, but allow me to let you in on a little secret. Women like to and they need to hear the words, I love you. And while we're at it, our spouses need to hear that as well, and our kids too. So, fellas, saying the words, I love you, does not make you soft, it makes you a man. I wanna read a letter to you uh, written to Dear Abby back in 2002. It says, Dear Abby, I enlisted shortly after Pearl Harbor. 36 days later, I was on my way to the Philippines. En route, the Philippines fell to the Japanese, and we were routed to Australia. Eleven days after we landed, I met the most beautiful girl in the world. On our first date, I told her I was going to marry her, and I did 18 months later, while on a 10-day R&R leave from New Guinea. After more than 57 years of marriage and two children, my beloved Mary died five days before Christmas. Although we agreed that our ashes were to be scattered over the mountains, I found that I could not part with hers. While Mary was alive, she would frequently say, you don't know how much I love you. And I'd reply, likewise. I never said I love you. Now her ashes are on my dresser, where I tell her several times a day how much I love her. But it's too late. Although I wrote poetry to her, I could not bring myself to say the three words that I knew she needed to hear the most. As my dearest was dying and we thought she was comatose, I told her, there aren't enough words to tell you how much I love you. A few hours later, she whispered, not enough words, and she died. The reason I'm writing is to urge men to express their feelings while their loved ones are still alive. I don't know why, but many men are reluctant to express the depth of their feelings. 
and that was from Missing Mary in Colorado. And Dear Abby replied, Dear Missing Mary, perhaps it's because they were taught as boys that it's unmanly to express emotion, which they have interpreted to mean that expressing heartfelt emotion is a sign of weakness. Fortunately, that philosophy is changing because we now know that expressing one's feelings is healthy for both men and women. So don't just take my word for it. Listen to Dear Abby. Tell your mother that you love her. The second way that you can show mom that you love her is to give her a hug. Think about it. Your mom was the first person to ever touch you. And some will argue that it was the doctor who delivered them. Well, keep in mind, mom carried you in her womb for nine months. And the first thing she wanted to do when you were born was to hold you, uh, kiss your cheeks, your little toes, your fingers, sing silly songs to you. And uh, her thumb was probably the first thing that you ever held on to. And when you were little, she didn't need to ask you for attention because you could be found clinging to her leg wherever she was. And you would just walk up behind her and give her a hug just because. And in return, your mom changed your messy diapers. She potty trained you and she caught your throw up with her bare hands. So let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you gave your mom a hug, you kissed her cheek, or held her hand like you did when you were a kid? So not only today, but every time you see her, touch your mother. She will appreciate that more than any Mother's Day gift you give her. The third way that you can show mom that you love her is to be patient with her. Moms have the toughest job in the world, and they don't get paid for it. There isn't a job in the world that requires the physical, emotional, and spiritual demands as being a mother. And please, don't ever make the mistake of asking a stay-at-home mom if she works, because she would be glad to trade places with any one of us. But on second thought, she probably wouldn't, because that's just how mothers are wired. And besides, she knows if she left them home with dad all day that it would be cereal and pizza for all three meals. The point is this. Despite the long list of things that mom does for us, we can be quick to become impatient with her. And she spoils us, and we take her for granted. We say things like, Mom... Why'd you make that for dinner? You know I don't like that. Or mom, my favorite shirt's been dirty for three weeks. When are you going to do laundry? Or mom, we've been out of potato chips since Sunday. When are you going to the store? Because mom takes care of our daily needs does not mean that we should take advantage of her or take her for granted. Instead, it should be even more of a reason that we should be patient with her. All right, now I'm going to talk to my middle schoolers and high schoolers here. Um, so sit up straight and listen carefully. Uh, let me ask you, are you more patient, kind, and respectful towards your friends and your friend's mother than you are your own mother? If that is true of you, I know this much. If you treated your friends like you do your mother, you wouldn't have friends. And if you treated their mother like you do your own mother, they wouldn't let you be friends with their kids. So always treat mom with respect. The fourth way that you can show mom that you love her is to give her attention. No matter what age you are, mothers always listen to our troubles. Whether it's your job, your friends, your teacher, your boss, even if she didn't agree with your stance on those things, she always listened and supported you. Now, I read an article recently about men that were on death row for capital crimes that they had committed, and they interviewed the mother and the son. And the common theme among the mothers were, he's such a sweet boy. Well, then the interviewer had to remind the, the, the mothers that, of the heinous crime that their kids had committed. But moms always followed up with, yeah, but he has such a big heart. So it's no wonder that professional athletes and famous people, when they get on TV, the first thing they do is say, hello, mom. It's because, because moms, moms listen to them. Now, those of you with aging mothers, please understand that now she's the one that needs somebody to talk to. And you might say, Dave, my mom is always complaining about something. All she wants to do is talk about herself. She keeps repeating the same things over and over again. And sometimes she even forgets my name. I just can't see her in this condition. Remember this. As our parents age, they have many fears, uncertainties, and anxieties. And we need to treat them with dignity. We need to treat them the way that we want to be treated when we are at that stage of our life. The fifth way that we can show mom that we love her is to be grateful for her. And how can we not be grateful for mom? She has given us so many wonderful sayings over the years that I'm sure many of us use today with our own kids. See if these sound familiar. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Why? Because I said so. If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Be nice to your sister. Wipe that. That was a good one. <laughs> that one hit home. 
Wipe that smirk off your face. If I spoke to my mother that way, look at this room. It's a pigsty. Don't make that face or it'll get stuck like that. Because I'm your mother, that's why. And then if none of these phrases worked, she could always go to this one. Wait until your father gets home. It's easy to be grateful for mom on Mother's Day. Cards will be purchased. We might make her dinner or we'll take her out to dinner. And all that is great because moms do deserve a day of their own to set aside to honor them. But we need to thank them each and every day. And take it from those of us whose mothers have passed away. You won't always have her, so be grateful for her today and every day. The sixth way that you can show mom that you love her is to be generous with her. Mom went most of her life doing without. She didn't spend any money on herself until all of your needs were met. And if you remember all those times that mom stood in front of her closet for what seemed like hours trying to pick out an outfit, it wasn't because she was indecisive. It's because all the newer clothes were probably in your closet. So today, I encourage you to treat mom to something special that she's had her eye on for quite a while and didn't take time to buy it for herself. It's time to spoil mom for a change. The Today Show did a survey on what mothers wanted for Mother's Day. I'd like to share some of those results with you. The first question was, would you rather receive a nice piece of jewelry or two extra hours of sleep? 68% said two extra hours of sleep. Would you rather receive an adorable handmade uh, card from your children or a professional massage and makeover? 63% said handmade card from their children. Would you rather be served breakfast in bed or go to a restaurant? 52% said they'd rather go to a restaurant. <laughs> Not a good testimony for us dads, that's for sure. <laughs> Would you rather spend the whole day with your family or have some alone time? And that was an even split, 50-50. My favorite one was finally one mom said that all she wanted for Mother's Day was to be able to go to the bathroom with the door closed. <laughs> some of you can relate. The seventh way that you can show mom that you love her is to honor your mother. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your, mother, or in, honor your father and mother, which is the first command with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. So God feels so strongly about honoring our mothers that it is the only commandment with the promise of a blessing. And we are to honor her as long as our mother lives, and we're to honor her memory after she passes. And some people say, yeah, I understand this verse, but my mother was not very honorable. Well, let me share something with you. God does not mention the qualifications of the mother. He just says that we are to honor her. The final and most important way that you can show mom that you love her is to witness to her. If your mother does not have a personal relationship with Jesus, or if you are unsure, I would recommend that you sit down with her, tell her you love her, uh, tell her you appreciate all that she's done for you and that you want to spend eternity with her. Ask her if she's going to heaven, and if so, on what basis. And this will get right to the heart of the matter, that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and nothing she has done can earn her way there. And tell her it is about a personal relationship with Jesus, not religion. Pray with her, asking Jesus to come into her heart. Now, if you find out she is already saved, and if she is already saved, great. Pray with her and thank Jesus for her salvation. While it may be awkward, you will always be glad that you did, no matter how they respond to you. And trust me, I know because I was able to witness to my mom on the day that she died. So even though I miss her greatly this Mother's Day, I can't help but smile knowing that I will see her again one day. When I think of my mom and uh, the impact and influence she's had on my life, uh, there's three things that come to mind and uh, three things that I would hope that I can emulate uh, with my own children. And the first thing uh, is the fact that my mom was always a, a safe place uh, to go to where if I needed to talk to somebody, I always knew my mom would be there to listen. And I always appreciate that about my mom. Uh, no matter if it was good, bad, or ugly, I could go to my mom not always get an answer or an opinion, uh, but just that she would listen. And uh, sometimes that's all I needed. The second thing when I think about my mom is uh, her encouragement. Uh, she's my biggest cheerleader, still is. When I think of uh, the 
good things in my life, uh, the things that I was passionate about. My mom was always there to encourage me uh, to chase after those things, and um, she was just a great support. But also, in the tough times in my life, uh, when I look back, uh, my mom was always there to encourage me, to pick me up, and uh, say, Steve, you can do it. Um, and I think of just one particular situation in my life. When I look back, um, I was in high school, I had a teacher tell me that uh, I wasn't college material. And I can remember just being so um, just upset about it uh, that uh, when I came home and told my mom, um, I just remember my mom saying, Steve, you, you can do that. If you put your mind to it, um, you can't go to college. And uh, so I eventually did go to college and I graduated. And uh, I owe that to my mom. She was just a great encouragement during that time that adversity that I had in my life. The third thing that I think of with my mom, and uh, probably the one that I pray that my, my children will always see, is over the last several years seeing my mom, how she's humbled herself under the headship of Jesus Christ, and allowing him to uh, be the king in her life, to be the head in her life. And uh, not that my mom's perfect in it, uh, but I've seen uh, those changes, and uh, again, that uh, my kids will see that in me as well. Uh, happy Mother's Day, Mom, and know that I love you, and Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh, good morning, and Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Hannah Davis, and today I was asked to talk about a pretty cool lady that I know, um, my mom, Tracy. Uh, I'm sure that most of you know her. She's a very social person, so chances are you've spoken to her once or twice, <laughs> and there's also a very good chance that that conversation has lasted way longer than you expected it to. Um, she has a tendency to do that, so it's just her thing. Uh, if you've come to the 1115 service before, you probably know her as the lady who walks in front of the tall, bald guy as the music team is playing the first song, who's still saying hi to everyone in the pews as she's still two minutes late. And we have a joke around our house that if the service actually starts at 1115, it's really 1117 or 18 for the Davises. Um, uh, looking at her, you wouldn't believe that she's the mother of four children, and you definitely wouldn't believe that she's 40. I mean, 35. <laughs> Don't worry, Mom, I gotcha. <laughs> At her age, she's still the prettiest woman that I know, and most people say that I look more like her than I do my dad, so I definitely got the better end of the bargain there. And I can say that without any repercussions because my dad's in Wisconsin with my sister right now, so I'm good. <laughs> um, with me being the third child of four, uh, she definitely knows how to handle teenage moods, especially teenage girl moods. Uh, when I'm mad, she knows to give me some space until I cool down. When I'm happy and annoying teenage girl, she plays along with me until my spurt of craziness goes away. And when I'm sad, she knows exactly what to say to bring me up. And when that doesn't work, she's the best shoulder to cry on. After a game, whether a good one or a bad one, she's always the first person to say something to me when I walk into the door. She'll try and give me advice uh, on what she saw. And even though she was only a cheerleader in high school, I try my best to sit there and as she tries to tell me that I have to watch the ball go from the pitcher's hand into the catcher's glove and that I have to move my feet on defense or else I'm going to get blown by every time I step onto the court. And I know you think that I don't hear it unless it comes out of dad's mouth or coach's mouth, but I really do and I really appreciate it. All of these little things are just a couple of the reasons why my mom deserves the best every day. But the best thing about her is her heart. She's one of the kindest people that I know to everyone that she meets. She and my dad raised us with God in the center of our lives, and she is a great example for us on how we should live our lives through him. So I know I don't say this nearly as often as I should, but thanks for all that you do for us, the big things and the small ones that we don't even notice. And I think I can say this for all the kids, to all the moms out there. We notice more than you think we do, and we truly appreciate it all, and we don't take it for granted. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, and I hope God bless you with one as great as mine. Thanks. Thank you, Hannah. At this time, please welcome, welcome Abby Rose to share about her mom. Mom, you're the best mom I could ever ask for. Words can't describe how much I love you. 
I love talking to you after school about something funny that happened during the day. And I love going shopping and out to eat with you and laughing until our stomachs hurt. I love taking naps and funny videos with you. I love going on car rides with you and listening to Adele and Sam Cooke, and I love watching Gilmore Girls with you. Thank you so much for always supporting me in everything I do. Thank you for driving me all around Westmont, even when it doesn't fit your schedule. Thank you for always offering to help me with my schoolwork and making me feel like the smartest person in the world. Thank you for always doing my laundry and cleaning the house. Thank you for endless rides to ballet, enduring the long nights of rehearsal, and taking me to get some occasional ice cream after a hard practice. Thank you for spending hours sewing my point shoes, doing my bun when I was little, gluing false eyelashes on, fixing my costumes when I needed, and making trips up to Altoona when I needed something from the dance shop. Thank you for always knowing what to say and praying over me when times get hard. Thank you for always putting me before yourself and loving me unconditionally and accepting me for me and always believing in me. Although I don't say it enough, I'm beyond thankful for you and everything you do for me. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Abby. At this time, please welcome Heidi Leshko to share about her mother, Diane. Good morning. Abby and Hannah, thank you. Um, I'm sure you made your mamas proud. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Heidi Leshko. I lived in Johnstown my entire life. I love it here. I have one older brother, and God has blessed me with five wonderful children who are afraid I'm going to embarrass them this morning. So I won't point them out. Um, the latest adventure that the Lord has me on is I just became a board certified Christian life coach. So that is a new adventure that is exciting. It's also exciting. I'm very excited to be here today. When they asked me to speak, I wasn't excited because I, I don't like speaking, but I was excited. I knew I had to because I know when I speak about my mom and her life, I have a message of hope um, for all of you. So for that, I'm excited to be here today. The message I want to share for you is not just for mothers, so I would ask you, those of you who aren't mothers, to please don't tune me out yet, um, because the message I have is, applies to all of us, to all of us who want to have a fulfilling life that has a meaning and purpose. If I were to write the title about my book, about my mom summarizing her life, it would be living an abundant life, a life of love, joy, peace, hope, and fulfillment in the midst of pain and heartache. And then the subtitle would be The Beauty of a Life Surrendered to Christ. My mom's life, while it was filled with much pain, was filled with even more contagious joy. And this is a sign that my sister-in-law bought my mom and I'm not going to go into the reason, the stories behind it, but I can just tell you that she earned it. So, while many of my mom's hopes and dreams were dashed, she chose to, to believe that God was enough to meet all of her needs. Her emotional needs, her financial needs, her needs for relationship, um, her spiritual needs. She chose to believe that he was always enough, even when things didn't feel good, uh, to believe that he is good in spite of things that don't feel so good in life. You might be wondering, how did my mom living this life of surrender to God affect how she parented us? So today I want to go over just four areas that she touched in our lives, which was love, honesty, prayer, and gratitude. The first one is love. My mom did a very good job of balancing tough love, or some of us might call that roles and expectations. She balanced tough love with grace. My mom understood that in a relationship, if all you have are roles without grace, that leads to judgment and, and will usually lead to rebellion where no healthy relationship is formed. But she knew the flip side of that is if you are a permissive friend parent to your child, then that often will lead to license, a license that they can think that they can do anything they want without considering that their choices affect other people. And even more important than that, that God has something better for them. My mom was very intentional in holding me up to these standards. And um, 
I can see looking back on her life how God really gave her that balance of grace and love and tough love because she was daily in his word and he, and he gave her wisdom. She also, uh, in this balance, didn't hesitate to step on my toes when I was out of line. And you know, I didn't like some of the rules my mom had, but again, because she gave me that love, I always knew that she had my best in mind. And that reminded me of this verse, Hebrews 12, 11. It says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained for it. And I can vouch for that. Um, because of how my mom raised me and realizing her unconditional love, it's easier for me to accept discipline from God, knowing that it's, it's for my good. Uh, my mom was also good. Even though she had the final say, she would take my opinion into consideration. An example of how my mom uh, balanced tough love and grace was when I was in the second grade, I was so excited, she made me this little black velvet pencil case. And we didn't have a lot of money growing up, so I was proud of this new thing. Well, a few weeks later, um, my mom noticed that my pencil case was filled with brand new markers. And when she looked at me, I said, yes, I had stolen it from a kid at school. And, and I still remember the look on my mom's face. It was a mixture of, you know, there was that look of guilt because she felt bad that we didn't have the markers, but it also was this look of she wanted more for me. And looking back, I'm really proud of her because I know as parents, we all can struggle with guilt for different reasons. And... Um, she didn't stay in that guilt. Instead, she pushed me on and she said, Heidi, I would have bought you markers if you needed them. You're going to go to school tomorrow and you're going to apologize and take these markers back. Now, while that was definitely a very humbling experience, it, it taught me many things. It taught me to consider how others feel and how my actions affect them. It taught me not to blame others. And my mom's reaction spurred me on to want to do better next time. It didn't make me feel like a horrible child. And that's something I try to do with my kids because I know we all mess up in life. We're human. And so a phrase that I often say to my kids is go and try again, because I think that's what God does for us. He, he just cares about our heart that we want to do right. We're going to mess up. But God, I think, always says us go and try again. Now I'm going to uh, move on to my second point, which is honesty. Something that my mom lived out at all costs was telling the truth. In my house, there was no such thing as a little white lie. Uh, my mom understood that lying destroys relationships and does not produce the godly life that God desires for us. And I remember when I was five, sometimes I would uh, make up uh, stories that my brother, who is four years older than me, was hitting me. So well, one day my mom got wise to it and she saw me back in the hallway rubbing my arm, you know, to make it real red. And that was the end of that. Um, and I don't remember how many times, he's shaking his head, he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't remember how many times I heard the story of the little boy who called Wolf. But this was a very good lesson for me to learn early in life. And I remember my mom consistently saying to us, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And I actually just realized that was a Bible verse. I hadn't realized it all these years. But she would always challenge us to consider the cost before we committed to anything. But once we committed we were all in. There was no way we were getting out of it because something better came along, or we just wanted to quit. We were in it for the commitment. My mom also counted the costs uh, in her life because she loved ministering to other people, but we as a family were her top priority to take care of. So when she would have another family that she would cook a meal for or something, if she was cooking them a meal, she'd cook us the same main dish and the same dessert. And I remember her telling me this verse, 1 Timothy 5.8 says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This truth stuck with me, especially now that I'm a mom. I realize it's a lot easier to serve people outside of your house because you at least get thanked and appreciated. Uh, so I appreciate the sacrifice that my mom knew that you have to take care of your own first before you minister to others. This is another area she taught me. She said, if you do something for someone, do it for no other reason than that's what God wants you to do. And don't even expect a thank you. And, you know, I didn't come to appreciate this training until really just a few years ago. I was going through a hard time, and a friend brought a meal to me. And when she handed me the, the meal, she said, now, Heidi, I want you to remember me. The next time I'm having a hard time, you better bring me a meal. And that was when I was starting to put things together that... Um, Sometimes people do nice things with 
wrong motives. And I became very thankful that my mom taught me just do for people as God leads, don't even expect acknowledgement. And really what stems from that is she taught me that nothing in life compares to the deep down joy of knowing that you know that you know you're right where God wants you. So, um, so that's pretty exciting. My mom also took advantage of teachable moments. I don't ever remember her preaching at us. I remember her sharing uh, verses with us or Bible stories, but I remember more if we were going through a hard time and we went to her and God opened that door, she would walk through there and teach us God's truth. And the only reason she was able to do that was she was in God's word every day. So she knew Jesus very intimately. And she always had a truth to point us towards a, a closer relationship to Jesus. And as I was um, thinking about speaking today, you know, it challenged my heart. I love my little uh, post-it notes, you know, to-do list. You like check them off and you feel good that you got something done that day. You know, so I think it's easy as parents and I want to I challenge other parents today, you know, not just to think, oh, I did devotions with my kids today, check it off. I prayed with them before bed, that's good enough. Because really, it's being in God's word and when our kids come to us with something that's bothering them, having something to give them when they actually have hearts that want to hear. So that's my challenge to me and other, other parents here today. My mom was also very intentional about casting a godly vision. I remember in my teen years, she would repeatedly say to me, you're my Esther. And I knew what she meant by that. Uh, one of her favorite Bible stories was Esther in the Bible. So I knew that she was saying, Heidi, in your life, when times get hard, you're going to stand up, even if it's great cost to you. And God has used the vision that my mom cast in my life years ago to help me stand for things that are important in life. And when I was a teenager, she would always say, be a trendsetter. And I knew what she meant by that. She meant be the unique me that God made me to be. Don't be following what my friends are doing. She confided in me years later that she had been concerned and often was on her knees before the Lord, praying that I would not be a follower, but I'd be a leader because my natural tendency was a follower. And um, God, God honored her prayers. And while he did give me leadership skills, it's just been in the last uh, couple of years that God has taught me to temper my leadership skills with more grace. I needed to be humbled to really truly surrender my life to give more fruit. Uh, trust me, I have a ways to go, but I'm encouraged how God will use broken dreams in our lives to refine us. This reminds me of September 6, 2016, the day my mom got to meet her Savior face to face. I remember uh, hearing the four-wheeler roll, and I ran up on the hillside with my mom, and uh, the verse, Humble yourselves under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time was just running through my mind. And that verse was very important to me because this past summer, my mom and I, uh, my family and I have been through a hard time the last couple of years. And this past summer, my mom and I felt like God was like picking us up, up out of the pit. And so in raw honesty, kneeling beside my mom on the hillside, I said, God, did you pick me up out of that pit just to throw me back in. And then immediately I threw my hands up to heaven, and I'm not usually a hand raiser. And I, I said, um, your will be done. Because I don't know if you know the song by Hillary Scott, your will be done. Well, that was my theme song this summer of coming to a place of resolve that God's ways are always best. He always knows best. He always does best. He always gets his way and he's always good even when life doesn't feel good. So praying that prayer of thy will be done leads me to what else spilled out from my mom, which is prayer. I can't remember get a time getting up in the morning when my mom wasn't having coffee with Jesus. She was sitting at the, at the kitchen counter with her Bible open and her prayer journal. And if I couldn't find her there, I knew that I would find her in the bathtub soaking. She loved that. Um, however, her Bible, you know, when she'd be soaking in the tub, I can't tell you how many times she dropped her Bible in the tub. And then, <laughs> then, then in an attempt to dry the Bible out, she would put it out in the sun. But you know how Johnstown weather is? Lots of rain. So her Bible has been rained on many times, and it's about this thick. But it's a, it's a wonderful thing that, that we're happy we have. My mom would also pray about everything. She would pray about what to have for breakfast, 
clear to the other end of the spectrum to pray that the enemy would break strongholds in our lives. And um, in the mornings, the last couple of years, every morning we would walk together and we would pray. And my mom, when she would pray, it wasn't flowery. It was just conversational, like I'm talking to you. And I remember her saying, Heidi, you might as well own how you feel and tell the Lord because he already knows it anyhow. So that, that was a help, just to be real with God. He accepts us where we are. I remember growing up, anytime we would hear an ambulance, we would stop what we were doing and we would pray for the person involved in the accident, the first responders, the doctors, the families. And, you know, I was really touched because a week after my mom passed away, we ran into someone and they said, Heidi, I have to tell you, the night your mom died, I heard the ambulance. And uh, I had no idea it was you guys, but I prayed for you guys. And I thought, look at how what she did all those years for people. You know, there's a biblical principle that says you reap what you sow and how we got the benefits of, of, and other people got the benefits of what she did. And I see so much now in the last eight months since she's been gone of prayers that she's prayed for us for years coming true, that she is still blessing us. Um, So I think that's important as parents to remember that we can either curse our kids or bless them. And what a blessing my mom was to us and even that I can stand up here today and share about her I know it's a lot of you praying for us too so for that I thank you my mom was also known for her popcorn prayers which were just short one sentence prayers asking God for nothing just simply thanking him so that leads me to my fourth and final point which is gratitude my mom uh, lived a life of gratitude and because of this I have so many memories of her making bad or stressful times in our lives fun She made the most of every moment, and she was able to do this because of how close she was with Jesus. My mom was able to thank God in the midst of painful times. Now, she didn't thank him for the pain, but she could thank him for who he is in spite of the pain. That reminds me of another verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly what she did. Our life was fun. It wasn't based on circumstances, but it was her choice to choose to make the best of it and to trust God to work it out for good even when it didn't feel good. I remember any hospital or medical uh, visit, she would make like a celebration. We would play games or we would have a special treat we would eat, or if it was an out-of-town medical visit, we would stay in a nice hotel with a pool. Now, my favorite memory of my mom when she took a traumatic uh, situation and filled it with peace and joy and good memories was when I was in the sixth grade, uh, my parents bought us a ferret and his name was Rascal. And he lived up to his name because he would hide in in the living room and when you would walk in, he'd jump out from behind the couch and attack you and bite you, okay? Well, this went on for months until one day something very disturbing happened and Rascal began to foam at the mouth. So my parents were very concerned, especially they were concerned because we were past the point of inoculation and they were pretty convinced that we were gonna die of rabies. So my mom and dad took me out of school in sixth grade, took us out, and we went to Pittsburgh to have Rascal put down for an autopsy. And uh, on our way home, you know, we left Rascal there. We stopped at the Monroeville Mall, and it was Christmas time, and they had all the little craft vendors in there. And remember those old dough ornaments that you personalized, okay? And I had the best time because we were buying Christmas ornaments for all of our teachers, thanking them for the impact they made on us. You know, it was, it was such a fun memory. But keep in mind, this was when my mom was convinced we were dying, and she was still thinking of other people and making this a fun time. The next day, we got a call from the doctor, and he had concluded what was going on. He had found out that Rascal had eaten a bar of soap. (laughs) We, We were so relieved. But th- this story is one of my favorites because it showed how my mom was able to thrive, not just survive, during unstable, scary, hard times. She made that trip to Pittsburgh a good memory. Um, recently, one of my mom's cousins wrote this to me about my mom, and it says, Diane's life showcases a message that we all need to hear, that while our world is broken by sin and Satan has power to harm us, God is greater than any of that, that his love is with us through it all, and our trust is not misplaced when we trust in him no matter what. 
I remember that night in the hospital eight months ago when my mom passed away. And I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? She was my rock. She was the glue that held our family together. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to have fun with my kids anymore. I, she was the one who helped me know how to parent my kids. You know, on and on the list goes. And then I said, but God, you're, you're going to have to help me because I can't do it. Well, God didn't make me wait long. It was within a couple days. My daughter Ella and I were shopping for my mom's uh, funeral flowers. Well, Ella got to laughing and laughing, and she said, Mom, I know this is just so inappropriate, but I'm having so much fun picking out Bebe's flowers. And, you know, it was like uh, the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, See, I'm even helping you have fun pick out, picking out your mom's funeral flowers. I'm going to be with you. And through the last eight months, so many times the Lord has whispered to my heart um, things for my kids and how to parent them, like, give this one a hug or, oh, you better bite your tongue and not say that, or you better say you're sorry, you know, and so it's exciting to see how God's continuing to walk alongside of me. We're going to be showing like 10 pictures from the summer, from this summer of my mom, and for those of you who knew my mom, you know she was fun and adventurous and full of life. She always had a smile on her face and an encouraging word. She taught us to embrace each and every moment as a gift from the Lord. She never had an excuse of being too old or not feeling like it. She would push herself to live life to the fullest. She made an effort to value relationships with people over anything else. At her viewing, we had pieces of paper where people could write down their favorite memory of my mom. And while many and most of what people wrote down was, she made me feel like I was her favorite, she understood me. My personal favorite one said, everybody needs a nut in their life and you were mine. So that sums it up. My mom loved to have fun. If you're here today, I want to challenge you. If you're looking for meaning and purpose in your life and you long to have abundant life, uh, let's read, let's, I, I want to read this verse. It's John 10.10. 10. It says, the thief's purpose, now that's the enemy of our soul, he is here to steal, kill, and destroy. So the, our enemy has three purposes, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, my purpose is, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. My mom's life was an example of how a life of shattered dreams, when surrendered to God, leads to a very rich, full, and meaningful life. And not only that, a life surrendered to God changes the world one relationship at a time. Now, because of uh, the impact my mom has had on my life, along with a few other very painful situations the Lord has allowed me to go through, I'm beginning um, my life coaching business, and I'm looking forward to providing support and walking alongside of others who have gone through hard times, and they want to have this rich and satisfying life, but they're kind of stuck, and they're not sure how to get there. And so I'm so encouraged because of how my mom role modeled her life to me, that she has helped prepare me to walk alongside of others who have experienced broken dreams, whether it's a, a broken marriage, um, difficulty parenting, loss of a loved one, or a mother who just feels so overwhelmed and doesn't know how to, um, feels like the urgent in her life is overtaking what is really important. So I'm looking forward to walking alongside to help with that, because I believe that God has made us all able to rise above our circumstances and to thrive, not just survive. So I encourage you today in closing, uh, whether you're a father, a mother, uh, a teenager, single, married, I want to challenge you to, to live your life surrendered to Christ. Give him that chance. He will not disappoint. Sure, you'll go through painful times, but uh, he will... As his child, if you are his child, he will use that for good. And he will give you the life of purpose and meaning that you've been searching for. He will not disappoint. I have a little booklet that, that my kids and I are going to hand out at the back today. It's called by Max Lucano. It's called, Is God Good? And it goes over when God lets the things happen in our life that don't feel good. Is he really good? And it also talks about how, how to have a relationship with Jesus. Um, I want to thank you for it was an honor and a privilege to be with you today to allow me to talk about my mom. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. And again, thank you, Hannah and Abby, for sharing those wonderful stories about your moms. 
Um, as we close today, we want, mothers, we want to honor you and everyone else. Remember that honoring your mother is the only commandment with the promise of a blessing. So let's be sure to do that today and always. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great examples of love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness that you show us daily. And Lord, I pray that if anyone here today does not know you as their personal Savior, that they will experience right now the love of God. And if we are to show our mother that we love her by witnessing to her, then we ourselves must first know you as our Lord and Savior so that we can be a witness. And I pray this morning for those that are struggling with relationships that are not what they should be. And I pray that the Lord could change that. Mothers don't always live up to our expectations. and Sometimes they experience hardships and challenges that affect their ability to offer what we need or want. Or they, want, they might have a personal weakness that negatively impacts us or our families. But we're to follow the example of you, our Heavenly Father, who, who loved us even though we didn't have any qualities that deserved your favor. For those whose mothers are gone and they are not able to make it right, I pray that the love of God would flood their soul, offering your forgiveness and peace. And Lord, I pray that today and every day that we would honor our mothers. And with this, I ask you to dismiss us with your blessings. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day.